Okay, so Fender was nice enough to send me my. But everything's black. I wore a white shirt just so you could see the damn thing better, but this is black. Um, so they sent me that and a whole bunch of wrenches and a their Fender folder, which has all their companies they've swallowed up on the back. Kind of interesting there. Didn't know they owned all those. Or, you know, own or help put out, like, you know, an agreement with Eddie, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so first I want, I'm going to do just things for me and uh, somebody else. I'm not, okay, so this is, you know who you are. Dude, we've been going back and forth about the uh, Marshall, and he has a setting. And I was going to try his setting out, and when I did... It's, I stumbled on something when I switched back to, because he's using the Code 50, and he's got it set on the Jubilee. I go with the JCM 800. And, you know, you're never going to get the sound of, like, I'll never get that stack, the sound that my 100-watt modded Marshall will get. If I can get close, and I know when I hit, like, you know, basic... A, G, A, usually G, or E. If it gets that growl, I know I'm there. But this is a little teeny combo with no, there's no out. It's all, it's so, it's really bassy. So, uh, I don't know. So I'm just trying to get a combination that works well together when I play in stereo with the PV6505. Um, so this is what the Marshall sounds like alone with no effects. I'm just gonna hit some chords. I'm not even gonna. I'm not here to impress anybody <laughs> except for myself and the other guy. So this is your settings that I, I went to. And then I went back to the JCM 800 and played a little and uh, just tweaked the settings a little bit. And I just stored it. So it stored this new setting, which is I'm just going to call the MDS, you know, setting. Because I have a Randy Rhodes one in there, but I lost it. <laughs> the key to Randy Rhodes for everybody, dude, if you're looking, it, it's the thing... You know, it's a distortion plus. That was his sound. He had two, three incredibly great sounding Marshalls. And he'd throw that friggin' distortion plus in there. And he built his sound with that. And that is a major part of that sound. That buzz saw. So, that's not my sound. That was his sound. And it sounds great. And he did a great job. And... You know, I love Randy. I bother, you know. But my sound is a is a combination of everything I like, but mainly it's uh, the tone, well, the chorus and stereo chorus and all that I, I picked up from Randy and Craig Turner because he'd run stereo chorus. And uh, Eddie Van Halen because I love his tone. There was nobody out that was even close that had that tone back then. Nobody. I don't care. George Lynch trying to rewrite history is like Frankie Benali. And people will believe it because George Lynch has been around for a long time. And he's always right there. He's always right in. He's like a little weasel. So, you know, I'm so slash. I Everybody knows how I feel about him. George Lynch, he just, he's just... Always there, always trying to get in. But tell me, tell me, tell me this. If he's so damn good, and he's this innovator of everything, then why didn't he get signed? And when he did get signed, why didn't they skyrocket to headlining arenas? Dorkin, Don Dorkin, or Lynch in any of his Lynch mob. If he's so great, if he's just, if he's better than Andy Van Halen, which he's absolutely not, and he didn't revolutionize guitar playing like Eddie Van Halen. Then he would be bigger than Eddie if he was all 
what he says he is and what other people are trying to so that's it. I don't like George. I don't, it's, I'm beginning to dislike him again. I saw him a million times in Exciter. Stupid bit. Actually, it, he was cool because whatever. I didn't see him play the star, but apparently he picked one up at the end of the year. I don't care what anybody says. They put it out for production, Charvel. You could buy the star body in a 1980 catalog. And that's when I got it. And everybody's, well, I had one too. Bull. Bull. Put up pictures. I want to see dates. I want to see receipts. I got them. All right, so, enough of that. It's just the Marshall. <laughs>
and your little reverb and I got it dimed out it's a uh, bass and treble 10 dropped mids Blink. so the combination of those two gives me my sound my my sound now my sound sound my personal you know sound that I took years to craft and people would say dude you got the most amazing sounding Marshall I've ever heard when I used to play out me the playing they didn't really you know they didn't uh, wow dude you're amazing I would get wow you're really fast can you slow down I mean do you know how to no pretty much one speed especially back then okay so here we go here's both <laughs> Okay, so there's both. And now I'm going to put in the... I'm not using the overdrive either, because this pickup is so hot. <laughs> that's the sound that's each of them both of them chorus my sound all right it's there's hints of Randy because of the chorus but not really it's it's totally different tone than Randy's and uh, when I was using the line six uh, before I bought this it sounded a lot more like Randy because I had a Randy setting on the line six that would mimic kind of the distortion plus but not so harsh because the distortion plus is so and then he put Altec speakers in the friggin Marshall cabinets those are really high you know, I know what he was going for but you know I'm not gonna say it because I know and you know whatever you ask if you're curious ask me but I'm not going on because too many people take what I say and then they go running with it and use it as gospel. You know, dude. It's getting old. 
I just want to keep Randy's name out there, but I want to keep the truth out there, not a bunch of BS. All right, so let's just do a little bit of something, and I'm done. <laughs> Wolf.